One of the fastest way to learn a new technology or a platform or a device is to reverse engineer it, to do it all the time uh, in research labs at Roswell. So in this video, we're going to do exactly that. We're going to take a demo template and break it into pieces and see how everything fits together. So in this video, we're going to take a demo template and break it into pieces and see how everything fits together. And we'll do one better. We will re-engineer it using one of the most iconic stories in our lifetime. No, not a notebook. The Lion King. Wait. Oh, it's a leopard. Hi, this is Steve Seow from Digital Asset. In previous episodes, we see that we could use templates to create projects very quickly. So in the first half of this video, we're going to use a template called Skeleton and reverse engineer it to see how it looks like and how pieces fit together. In the second half of the video, we're going to use the Lion King as an example and re-engineer the template and it will all make sense. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. All right, let's jump right in. I'm going to start a new demo project and I'm going to use the default skeleton template by not specifying any uh, template name. So we'll use a skeleton by default. Now let's CD into our folder and then run demo studio, which opens up VS code. Now inside of VS code, let's uh, open up the demo folder and open up main.daml. And uh, let's dive deeper into what we see here. Let's save some space here and uh, let's zoom in. The first thing you see at the top of your demo file is the module. This defines the entire module. And it's important because you may need to import this module by this name main. Line three, you see an import statement that brings in a demo script. We covered the script in previous videos. Line five defines a type that's going to be the output when we call the choices below. And this is the asset template and the contract that it will produce. So we'll go into that in a second. Starting at line seven, you see template followed by a name called asset. Now there could be more than one template uh, inside of a module. In this case, this module is, uh, this template is called asset and it has input parameters of issuer, owner, and name. Now, if we move down to line 13, you're going to see one line to make sure that the name is not empty. We'll go into that in future videos, but line 14 is important. Signatory is the party that can authorize the creation while controller is the party that can take action. In this case, uh, the owner can exercise a choice called give and this give will produce a type called asset ID, which we define at the top. So essentially this is telling me that this contract when created will have an owner specified and this owner can take the action of giving it to a new owner and then that new owner can give it to the next owner and what happens when this choice is exercised it will trigger the create command now what is this this if you roll over it it gives you a clue now this is scoped to the template so this refers to the asset so when this is exercised it will create the another asset contract based off the asset template. The second half of the demo file, you'll find the script that will help us test our code. Lines 25 and 26 create two parties for us to play with, Alice and Bob. Lines 28, Alice creates an asset as a start. Uh, in this case, it's a TV. In lines 34, Alice is going to give the TV to Bob. So Bob is the new owner. And then lines 37, 38 is another line of execution. And it states that Bob gives the TV back to Alice. Now, if you pay careful attention, uh, you see that lines 34 and 37 are nearly the same, except for that in 34, it returns the results to a Bob TV. 
Now, if I were to open up the script output and go to show transaction view, there are no errors reported at the top, so I know we're doing things correctly. Now, what's going on is this. The line 34 has a return value, and then line 37 does not. If I were to force line 37 to uh, be re to return a value, let's say Alice TV again, you will see on the right side that there's an error now. What's going on is this. The last line 37 is actually returning the type specified at the top where it says script asset ID. So if I remove that, it will automatically return this asset ID so we don't have to make it return a type. Awesome. Now, let's take the skeleton template and put the Lion King story on top of it to re-engineer it so we'll see how things fit together even clearer. And if you have not seen The Lion King, spoiler alert. Okay, the plot of The Lion King involves how a Lion King, Mustafa, was preparing to hand over his kingdom to his boy, Simba. Of course, there's a bad uncle who gets into the mix. Uh, I think his name was Scar or Scarface. And he got uh, Mustafa killed. And now Simba has to fight to get the kingdom back. Now, there's one scene in the beginning where Simba woke up the father and said, hey, you promised to bring me to go watch the, uh, the sunrise. So they go up to this cliff and the father, while overlooking the vast expanse of land, and said, um, everything that the light touches is my kingdom. Um, and and uh, the boy goes, ooh, awesome. And, and Mustafa said, eh, one day all this will be yours. Except for that patch that's dark. Uh, so... This is like a smart contract. You would expect Simba, in when he has his offspring, to do the same to his offspring and bring them to the cliff and say that one day all this will be yours. So the smart contract remains the same. The, the king hands over to the successor. And, and then his successor will hand off to the successor. So let's take a look at this template now, but let's change some of the names and it will all click. So we're going to imagine that uh, Musafa and the son, Simba, has a smart contract going on. And here's the main.daml again. We're going to change a few things. We're not dealing with asset anymore. We're moving kingdoms. Well, we're moving ownership of kingdoms from one lion to another. So let's call the, our asset kingdom. And we will make the uh, ID kingdom ID instead of asset ID. And anywhere where we have a occurrence of an asset ID, we're going to change it to kingdom ID. Still the same thing. We're not dealing with TVs. We are dealing with everything that the light touches. So, all right, template. Let's change it to kingdom as well. Next, let's take care of the uh, input parameters. In this case, the issuer. We'll start with the issuer. Wait a minute. Uh, lines 29. Uh, let's change that to kingdom because we'll be creating uh, the kingdom contract. Okay, let's go back to the issuer. In this case, the issuer is the current king, whoever the king is, who is going to pass on to the next king. So current king will be what used to be issuer. So now we'll say that the signatory must be the current king. The current king can authorize the transfer of kingdom. So let's change it all in the script accordingly. That's all we've got. Now let's go back now. The owner in this case is who will receive the kingdom. We will call it the future king. The future king will uh, be mentioned when a new kingdom is um, created. In this case, uh, over here, we'll change that. And the when a contract is created, the future king will have the right to give it to the next king, the next future king, the successor. So we change that. Now for the name, let's change that to uh, kingdom name uh, instead of just name. So we are describing the asset, right? We're describing what is being transferred from one party to another. Uh, in this case, we will just call that party the successor. Who is the successor that will receive the new kingdom so let's change that make a let me just do a quick copy and change that in our line 35 and change it in line 37 where we state a new successor 
Now for the name, let's uh, go ahead and change the kingdom name to what Musafa said it was. It's going to be, uh, what was it? Everything that the light touches, right? So that's a lot. Okay, that's good enough. Now going back, we want to ensure that a name is described so it cannot be empty. And then the future king will be uh, the input parameter of successor. In this case, at the bottom, you see that the successor was Bob and the successor was Alice in lines 35 and 38. But we don't want Alice. Alice uh, is not in this story. So we're going to call it uh, Musafa. Whoops. Musafa, if I can spell. Or Mufasa. Uh, and we're going to change that to Mufasa over here. And again in the party hint. And then there's only two characters that we're dealing with. The second character is not Bob. It's going to be um, Simba. So let's change that to Simba. And one more time in the hint, it will be Simba. Now, lines 28 will deal with the creation of, well, in this case, we're going to pretend that the kingdom was created uh, for a start. So it has to be created. So we're going to have Mufasa create the kingdom and give himself the, uh, the throne. Okay, and lines 34, we are going to say that he has decided to give it to Simba. So let's change that to... Um, now, when it's executed, it's going to be Simba's kingdom. It won't be Mufasa's kingdom anymore. So Simba's kingdom will be the end result of this being exercised because he was named the successor. Now, let's suppose that Simba changes his mind because he watched the trailer of The Lion King and go, Oh, no, I, I don't want all that. I'm going to give it back to you, Dad. So Simba... Will, ex will exercise the give choice again and gives it right back to his dad. There you go. And I believe we are done, if I can spell. There you go. So what we have here is almost like the skeleton template. And the story goes that Mufasa created a kingdom and gave himself the throne. So he is the current king and the future king who can act on it. And he decided to act on it. He decided to give it to Simba. And Simba accepted the contract and then decided to give it back to his dad. Now, if we were to look at the script output, you see that it's clean. There's no errors. Click on transaction view and you see a story being told of our version of the Lion King. Um, the only mistake I made is that uh, I think Simba is not getting any kingdom. I think he's getting um, Alice's OTV. Uh, but you get the point. So this uh, this transfer of ownership really uh, highlight the flow that the skeleton template is doing. Wasn't that a fun way to look at a smart contract? Now, your demo app will look very different. And it will largely depend on your business logic, your data model, your architecture. So before you write a first line of code, you probably want to think through that. Who are the parties involved in the creation of contracts? What are the rights and obligations of each of them? And then finally, the choices that can be exercised and what happens when they are exercised. I got more for you. Stay tuned for the next few episodes. Bye.